It's one of the biggest, if not the grandest question in all of science. Are we alone in the universe? For centuries, this question has captivated the imaginations of philosophers, astronomers, and curious minds alike. The vast expanse of the cosmos, with its billions of galaxies, each brimming with a multitude of stars and potentially habitable planets, beckons us with its mysteries. So, we find ourselves at the crossroads of curiosity and science, pondering a question as old as time itself. Is there life out there beyond Earth? I'm sure there's life out there and civilizations out there because, I mean, there are, you know, the piece of the universe we can see, there are of order two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, which is a small patch of a possibly infinite universe beyond. So there's definitely life and civilizations out there. There has to be. But the question really is, how many of them are contactable? How far away do you have to go? It could be you have to go out of our galaxy to get another one. So I think that's the real question. It's, it's internal to our galaxy. Because I don't see we're ever going to be contacting things from another galaxy. So it's practically, it's almost irrelevant. But inside our galaxy, 400 billion stars, then that's the question. What is there in there? As we delve deeper into the cosmos, the possibility of alien life becomes not just a whimsical notion, but a question grounded in scientific plausibility. Consider this. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is home to over 100 billion stars, and recent advances in astronomy have led to the discovery of thousands of exoplanets, many of which reside in the habitable zone of their stars, where conditions could support life as we know it. Imagine, for a moment, the diversity of life forms that could exist on these myriad worlds. Life, as an expression of the universe's complexity, might have emerged numerous times in numerous forms across the vast stretches of space. The laws of chemistry and physics are uniform throughout the cosmos, suggesting that the processes that sparked life on Earth could be replicated elsewhere. Furthermore, the sheer age of the universe, nearly 14 billion years, provides an ample temporal canvas for intelligent life to evolve. Our planet is a mere 4.5 billion years old in comparison a youthful entity on the cosmic timeline. In older star systems, civilizations could have risen and flourished, potentially reaching levels of technological advancement far beyond our current capabilities. Yet this brings us to an intriguing paradox. If the universe teems with life, and if intelligent beings have had billions of years to evolve and potentially explore the galaxy, why haven't we found definitive evidence of their existence? This enigma confronts us with a puzzling contradiction between high probability and the lack of evidence. So as we gaze upon the stars and ponder the mysteries of the cosmos, we are left with a compelling question that challenges our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Where are all the aliens? There's a thing called the Fermi paradox. And the point is that let's just take the Milky Way galaxy. There are something like 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. And very recently, we'd, we've been discovering planets around every star that we can survey. We know of a thousand planets or more now around distant stars. So it looks like planetary systems are common. So 400 billion, let's say 100 billion solar systems. Our galaxy has been around for over 11 billion years, 12 billion years. So the question is, if there were civilizations out there and they'd survived, they should have spread across the galaxy by now, or at least their artifacts, their self-replicating machines, their robots that can go and mine and rebuild themselves and exponentially reproduce to populate a galaxy. We're not far off doing that. And by far off, I mean, you could give us 10,000 years, but we know we can do that in principle. And then we will colonize the galaxy if we're still around. 10,000 years is the blink of an eye. There's been 11 billion years for those things to happen. So the question is, why don't we find artifacts of other civilizations? And the answer is, we don't know. Um, it could be that they're rare. It could be that civilizations destroy themselves before they get to that point. It could be that civilizations don't explore. Although that's hard to understand because exploration seems to be it's the heart of science and the driving force behind civilization in the first place. So it's a very good question, actually, and the answer is we don't know. Our search for extraterrestrial intelligence leads us to confront the Fermi paradox, the apparent contradiction between the high probability of alien life and the lack of evidence for or contact with such civilizations. 
Among the many theories proposed to explain this paradox, one stands out for its bold yet intriguing premise, the zoo hypothesis. The zoo hypothesis posits that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations are aware of us and are actively observing Earth, much like zookeepers watch over animals in a zoo. According to this theory, these civilizations have established a sort of galactic quarantine, deliberately avoiding contact with us to allow for natural evolution and socio-cultural development, much as a conservationist would protect a natural habitat from outside interference. Under this hypothesis, the Milky Way could be teeming with intelligent life, yet these advanced beings choose to remain hidden or unobtrusive. They may be waiting for a particular developmental milestone or ethical standard to be reached before they make themselves known. This could be likened to a cosmic test with humanity unaware participants. Such a scenario would explain the eerie silence of the cosmos and the lack of physical evidence for extraterrestrial visitations. It suggests a universe where intelligent life is plentiful but intentionally discreet and where Earth and its inhabitants are part of a vast, unseen experiment or observation. Recently, there has been a resurgence of public interest in the possibility of alien visitation on Earth. This renewed curiosity is fueled by declassified government reports, advancements in astronomical technologies, and the enduring allure of the unknown. The idea that we might be living in a galactic zoo captivates the imagination prompting both scientific and philosophical discussions about our place in the universe and the nature of life beyond our planet. So I'm very open-minded about the subjects. I just don't, I've seen not one scrap of evidence from any reputable source that tells me that we've been visited by aliens. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So if you look at the search for life on Mars at the moment, so the Perseverance rover, it's got experiments on it. It's going around, it's, it's taking cores. It can drill, it can do chemistry and spectroscopy and all these things. But ultimately, every scientist I've spoken to on that mission said that even if we get signs that there's complex organics there, which we could gather from those instruments, the only way we will believe it is if we bring those samples back to Earth and we subject them to experiments with these huge facilities we've got here on Earth. And even then, it will probably take about 20 years before people accept it. Because if you look at, there are structures called stromatolites on Earth, right, which are now accepted as the oldest evidence of living 3.5, 3.8 billion years ago off the coast of Western Australia, for example. And those things were the subject of debate, even though we had them in our hands. For 20 years or more, people were arguing about whether they were evidence of life or not. That's how hard you have to work when you've got small amounts of evidence from a long time ago in that case, or a different planet in terms of Mars. You've got to work very, very, very hard to show that you've not been misled. A lot of science is quantifying the errors in your observations. So. When you're looking for life beyond Earth, remember that even looking for life on Earth, if you go back three and a half billion years, has been tremendously controversial. So it's short of, you know, very clear evidence of a, a UFO literally landing in like Hyde Park or something. Yeah. Then I'd go, okay. Or, you know, some signal we could receive, we look for it. We've got the SETI, which is a valuable scientific endeavor to go and listen. I mean, the first thing you want to do is look for evidence of civilizations out there. So we do, and we haven't found any. We found a couple of little blips, and they don't end up being repeatable. So then we try to look for them again, they've gone. The zoo hypothesis not only suggests that we might be under the watchful eyes of extraterrestrial observers, but it also implies the existence of civilizations so advanced, their capabilities are beyond our current comprehension. In the cosmic timescale, our galaxy has existed for about 13.7 billion years, offering ample time for such civilizations to evolve, advance, and possibly reach a level of development that is, to us, indistinguishable from magic. Imagine civilizations that have navigated the perils of their technological adolescence, avoided self-destruction, and progressed to a point where they can traverse galaxies, manipulate cosmic structures, and perhaps even control the very fabric of space-time. Such civilizations, having achieved a near godlike status, could be observing younger civilizations like ours, guiding or simply studying us in a manner we cannot yet understand. This perspective invites us to ponder our own future. 
If humanity manages to survive for millions of years, transcending our current limitations and expanding our understanding of the universe, what might we become? The thought is staggering. Millennia from now, we could be the advanced beings in someone else's zoo hypothesis, guardians of a younger civilization embarking on its own journey through the stars. On the other hand, the zoo hypothesis faces its own set of criticisms. If such ultra-advanced civilizations truly exist, why remain undetected by our instruments? It's reasonable to assume that a civilization a million years ahead of us would possess technology so advanced it would not leave discernible traces. However, such a civilization might also create megastructures or emit energy signatures that should be detectable with our current or near-future technologies. This absence of evidence challenges the notion of a cosmic zoo, fueling the debate on the existence and nature of an alien civilization millions of years ahead of us. So let's say a billion years. A billion years is still nothing. You get some civilizations that evolved a billion years before us. Why are they not there? Why can't we see them? So then people start saying, well, maybe there's a finite life that all civilizations have. Maybe they destroy themselves. Maybe they don't become spacefaring civilizations. It's Elon Musk's argument when you ask him, why do you want to go to Mars? Because you can make a very strong argument that we should see the thing. It should be like Star Wars. Where are the aliens? That's one of the, like the Fermi paradox question. A lot of people have asked me if I've seen any evidence of aliens and I haven't, which is kind of concerning because then I probably prefer to at least have seen some archaeological evidence of aliens. To the best of my knowledge, there is no, not aware of any evidence of aliens. If they're out there, they're very subtle. As we stand at the frontier of cosmic discovery, the enigma of extraterrestrial life remains one of the greatest riddles of our time. However, this pursuit is more than just a quest for answers. It reflects our profound desire to understand our place in the cosmos. Whether we are alone or part of a grander galactic community, our quest, with each discovery and each hypothesis, brings us closer to understanding the profound mysteries and secrets of this boundless, enigmatic universe. <laughs>